Welcome to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show, a real estate investment program. Listen and learn how to use real estate to build wealth and passive income streams for you and your family. We bring you experts every day to discuss and answer your questions on everything from single family homes all the way up to 600 plus unit apartment complexes. And now, the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Welcome to the show. My name is Al Gordon, and as always, I'm working on your financial freedom. And even though, even though this year's almost in the books, I'm still going to help you get to where you're trying to get to. But we have to have a pact, you and I. You have to make an informed decision in your mind that you're going to stop doing whatever it is you've been doing. In other words, there's something going on in your life. There's something going on in your world, something going on within that sphere of influence that you try and maintain control over that's preventing you from having the life that you really want. That's a pretty provocative statement, isn't it? But I absolutely know that it's true. Now, a lot of us, me included, by the way, a lot of us, we get, we get blinded. We do. We get blinded to the fact that there's a different path for us. See, we just, we get hunkered down. We get focused on what we think is going to work for our life. We start off in school. Some of us do well in school. Some of us don't do well in school. It doesn't matter. You get out of school what you get out of school. Oh, and keep in mind, while you're going through school, you have a lot of people imprinting their norms, values, and ideas upon you. Some, some of these, these things that they tell you about, that they teach you about, that they condition you with, some of these things are actually really good pieces of information. Some of these things are going to lead to some really great decisions in your life. Yet some of these other things that they imprint upon you are garbage. And what happens is these things like actually transition into something called a false belief. Now, a false belief is just that. It's something you believe to be true, but it's really not true. But in your mind, you believe it to be true. So you go about your life making decisions based on belief systems that you have. So you, you made it through school. Now, some of us went to college. Some of us did not go to college. We went right into the workforce. And for those of us that went to college, we got another massive dose of people influencing us, conditioning us, telling us what the future is going to be like. And we, we take that information in, we process it. And again, we get more great belief systems. We reinforce some great belief systems, but we also create and reinforce some false beliefs. And, and the big false belief that's out there is the false belief that all you have to do is get yourself into the workforce you heard me correctly. Just get into the workforce. Start trading time for money. Do that religiously for 30, 40, maybe 50 years. Save money. See, they're, they're not even really, they call it a retirement program. They call it a 401k retirement fund, right? But what these things really are, are just massive savings accounts. They condition you to take some of that hard-earned money, set it aside, and forget about it. They teach you to not notice it. As a matter of fact, they take it out of your hands before you even know it's in your hands because it never makes it to your hands. It never makes it to your checkbook because your employer takes that money out right away because they've got your back, right? But here's the thing the employer's not telling you. They're, they're totally cool with this 401k thing or, or you doing an IRA thing, what, whatever you're doing for retirement, because it shifted the burden of retirement from them onto you. 
That's what happened in the 1980s. Actually, it happened in 1978 when the laws went through that allowed the 401k to come into existence. I mean, I was alive back then. I remember the discussions. Even back then, I was a much younger guy, but we were talking about Social Security way back then, back when I was like in my 20s. I'm no longer in my 20s. That's how far back I'm going. We were talking about Social Security and the fact it was going to fail us in the future. Now, I'm not old enough to take Social Security down. I'm, I'm not. I'm not, even, I'm not even old enough to get the, the minimum cut. I still have like, I don't know, four and a half years before I even get to the age of 62. And I don't care about Social Security. I've, I've given up on all those lies, all those false beliefs that have been printed upon me. I'm no different than you. Look, dude, I'm telling you, I did everything I was supposed to do. I, I did it all to the letter. I listened to all those people in my life that were advising me on how to get ahead in life. I did it. I went to school, got the grades, got good enough grades to get into college, got good enough grades in college to get a degree. And in doing so, I had to take a scholarship that had a link to the military because that's the only way I could afford to go to college. See, I told you I came from... Well, I guess I didn't tell you that, did I? Okay, I came from very meager beginnings. I was never homeless. No, I was never homeless. But I can count the many times we got real close. So going to college, I mean, that was a pipe dream. You know, when I told my parents that's what I want to do, they kind of looked at me like, we support you, knowing in the back of their minds, they're, they're going, we barely keep enough money into the household to feed ourselves, let alone pay for tuition for you. So that was my trade-off to keep the false belief system in place. I had to take a scholarship that paid for all my tuition, all my fees, but it didn't pay for my room and board. So what did I do? Like every other college student, I took out student loan debt. So I had debt coming out of college. The, the big difference be probably between me and, say, you is the fact that I had a job. See, I had a contract that said I was going to serve in the military, and poof, off I went, trading time for money, defending this nation. Now, I, I, don't, I don't take anything away from that, but I will tell you this. It really stunted me. When we come back from the break, I'll explain why. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. Now, let's get back to your map to financial freedom. Welcome back to the show. All right, so we went to break. I was telling you that I was stunted. Yeah, I was stunted. You know what that means, right? It means that my full potential was was actually held at bay. It was. Because what I had accepted in my life was, first of all, the fact that I needed to go to college to be successful. I mean, that was imprinted into my brain. So I had to go to college. There was there was no getting around that. And, and because I came from a background where ah, we didn't have two nickels rubbed together most of the time, that was important to me because I was not going to stay in that type of economic quagmire. That, that was not of interest to me. So I went to college and I did all the things college students do. Some of it smart, some of it not so smart. And somehow I managed to, to earn that degree. And I had to earn that degree in order to get my commission in the United States Army, which started me on a 27-year career serving as an officer in the United States Army. Now, the majority of that time was served on an active duty status. Now, some of that time was actually spent in the reserve component as, as what we call a, a traditional soldier. In other words, somebody assigned to the National Guard that supposedly shows up one weekend a month and two weeks in the summer. And what we found through all of our years of war is that 
mainly those part-time soldiers, that's that's really the amount of time they get off. Yeah, because yeah, they those part-time soldiers actually work pretty darn hard. But here's the point I need to make. My retirement destiny as a young man was was dialed in to earning a pension. See, when when I was kind of in college and looking around and not getting a lot of great advice from people that I should have gotten great advice from, yeah, I mean, I knew a lot of people, but people weren't sharing information with me. And more so, I was I was oblivious to the, to what went on in like corporate America or municipal government or or any of these other places where you can find employment to include, you know, small startup firms and stuff like that. But but I didn't I didn't really need to worry about that because I had signed a contract that said, hey, you own me. Yeah, that's what those military contracts say. It basically says you're the property of the United States government for the entire term of this contract exists. Yeah, read the fine print. Read the fine print. It's all in there. And trust me, I, I didn't have a problem with that. I, I love this country. So if, if it sounds like I'm, I'm ranting against this country or serving my nation, that's not what I'm ranting against. What I'm ranting against is the fact that I had to spend 27 years serving my country. Again, I don't have a problem with it, but I spent 27 years serving my country so that I could earn a pension only be told at the time that I thought I was going to get promoted and probably would spend at least another three years in the military, I was told my time was done. It was time for me to exit the military and time for me to get on with my life. So in other words, the army was essentially ordering me to Fort Living Room. And my final year in the army was spent overseas in a place that, well, we are no longer there anymore. Let's just put it that way. So you don't do a lot of job searching in a combat zone. You don't spend a lot of time interviewing for jobs in a combat zone. You just, you just don't do it. You don't do it. So when you come home from the combat zone and you process out of the army and you find yourself in Fort Living Room driving your wife absolutely bananas because she's not even sure how to deal with you because she really hasn't seen you for the last five years because of what's gone on with the military. And now all of a sudden you're front and center and you think you're in charge of the household. Ah, you want to talk about conflict? Ah, that's conflict right there. But here's the bigger conflict. I'm now living off a pension. I've got a pension. It's paying me, baby. It's like paying me. But it's only paying me one-third of what I made the previous month. Yeah, that's the problem with the military pension. See, when you look at what a military service member is paid, they are paid something called base pay. So there's a little chunk of money there. And then you get something called subsistence allowance, which is like a couple extra dollars dropped on. And then you get something called a housing allowance. If, if you don't occupy service provided housing, in other words, if you're not using base housing or housing that is owned by the military, they pay you money to go out and rent a place to live. Okay. So all of these costs or all these, I should say entitlements, because that's what they are. They're actually entitlements. These all form you're paying allowances. And for a lot of military members, you know, it's it's one of these things where whether you live on base housing or you live on the economy, it kind of doesn't matter because if you live in base housing, you're not paying for housing, but you're also getting many times over not the greatest housing experience, but you're not paying for housing versus if you're living on the local economy, the way they structure these things is they'll pay you up to 80% of what the housing cost is, assuming that, you know, you'll probably get something a little bit nicer than you would have gotten in base housing and the government shouldn't have to pay for that. And that's kind of the mindset. So you work all these things in to your natural budget, your operational budget for your household. Now, in my particular household, we had something that most households don't have. We had a stay-at-home mom. You heard me correctly. Tina was a stay-at-home mom. She not only was a stay-at-home mom, she was a stay-at-home, take-care-of-the-house person. I mean, that was, that was literally her job, raising our children, taking care of the house, because dad was never there. 
But now dad is back and dad is grumpy because dad's got issues that come from serving in the military and doing things that people probably shouldn't do and seeing things people probably shouldn't see. So, you know, dad's got little issues popping around in his mind and that's not helping things because what dad's trying to do, he's trying to, well, he's live off of one third of what he made. Okay. Because, oh, that's the other piece I didn't tell you is the retirement pension. It is based on only the base pay. It's, it's, it doesn't include the subsistence payment, which isn't a lot. And it doesn't include the housing piece which, to be honest with you, can be quite a lot, depending on where you're at. Yeah, look, go ahead and look, look at what service members are entitled on the West Coast living off base. You, you can find it. Just do a Google search, military housing uh, entitlement. I think that's what it's called. There's a lot of money there. So when you retire and you're only getting a percentage of the base pay, well, Even though the retirement scale starts at 50% of your base pay, and then depending on actual years of good service beyond that, you get something like 2.5% increase for each year, and and that might get you up to like 75% of base pay. Okay, it's still... I'm not not at the 75 scale. I'm at the closer to the 50 scale. And by the way, it was one-third of what I was making, and Tina was not earning money. You want to talk about a living nightmare? That's exactly where I was. And I will tell you this. I busted my butt to get back into the workforce. But it didn't do me any good. When we come back from the break, I'll tell you why. Listening to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show will change your life. We will teach you how to create wealth and passive income so you can be financially free. And now, back to your host. Welcome back to the show. So I'm I'm thinking you're thinking that I need a hug, right? I need a hug. You totally think I need a hug. And to be honest with you, I'll take a hug. I'm okay with taking a hug. I mean... I'm not, I'm not a mean, nasty person anymore. Well, at least I think I'm not. So yeah, I'd take a hug. What I'm sharing with you on this show, I'm sharing with you an experience that I had in my life that was devastating to me. It was devastating. See, I, I had done everything that I was supposed to do. I gave my life. I gave my loyalty to the United States Army. I was selected for promotion. I really thought I was going to be promoted. But when the dust all settled, there was no place for me to promote into. So what did the Army do? Well, needs of the Army won out, and they didn't need an aging lieutenant colonel. So to the retirement heap, I went. So coming off of active duty, I'm in a total mess because the last year of my life, I've been essentially in a combat zone. Yeah, I've been focused on prosecuting the nation's conflicts. And then I came home and I out-processed through Fort Hood, Texas, found myself in Fair Oaks Ranch, Texas. Yes, that's where I live, just outside of San Antonio. And I was a mess. I, I had to get back into the workforce. Yeah, because I, I could I was smart enough to realize that, you know, when you're you need X amount of dollars to sustain your household and you're only bringing in one-third of the dollars that you need, you, you have what's called a huge financial problem. And, and even though I had a financial planner back in the day who told me that I needed to have six months worth of savings set aside, I'll be honest with you, I, I never got there. I never got to six months worth of savings. No, I, I never did because every time I actually had some money in savings, there was usually something that came up that – caused me to go tap into that quote unquote little reserve fund. So I think when I retired, I had maybe like one, possibly two months worth of money saved up. And to be honest with you, I burned through that money like in the first three or four months of retirement. And and the lie I was living was that I was retired. I wasn't retired. I okay, I was 
physically retired. I had a piece of paper from the army that said, congratulations on serving your country. You're retired. But that piece of paper, it, it wasn't making up the difference. So think about it. Think about what it costs you to manage your household right now, whatever that number is. And let's say something happens to you in, in your employment realm, and you're now in a position where you're only making one third of where, what you were making. How, how do you survive? What do you do? Well, you probably do exactly what I did, which is you know burn through that savings. And then when you realize that, damn, I don't have a job yet. I mean, I've, I've been throwing resumes out there. I, I get some hits every once in a while. I can't even land an interview. I can't even, I can't even sit across from somebody and explain to them why I would be the best person to put on their team because I, I can't even penetrate the job field. And, and I'll just tell you, one, one of the things I was trying to do, I was trying to penetrate the job field at, at a level that would pay me what I thought would be commensurate to what I had been bur- earning on active duty. See, one of the things that happens to military people, and I'll just, I'll just lay it out for you, is that we have a tendency to retire and we try and get back into the workforce, but it's not an easy thing to do. And in my particular case, trying to lateral across, unbeknownst to me, there, there's a lot of people pushing back in those organizations. I mean, think about it. Let's say you're a director in your organization. I don't know where that person sits on the food chain, but let's say that director position is equivalent to where I was in the military. What, what, do, you, what do you think I'm going to be trying to, to land? I'm going to be trying to land that director position because I believe I have the skill set necessary to take that to the next level. And it looks like the pay and allowances are going to be about similar to what I've been making. And I shouldn't be, I shouldn't be punished for having to take a lesser paying job because you know that I get a pension. That pension's none of your business. But in the back of employers' minds, they know that. They know that when you're a military retiree, you're drawing a pension. And there are employers out there that will use that in the calculus to determine what it is they want to pay you or what kind of jobs they'll make available to you. Yeah, that that kind of stuff goes on out there. So when I finally had my epiphany of running out of what little savings that I had and and realizing I still hadn't landed that, that big ticket job that I was looking for, that I was putting all my effort into and was getting nowhere with, I realized I had to expand my horizons and and I had to do things a little bit differently. As a matter of fact, what I had to do was I had to change my thought process. I did. I had to start looking at jobs that would provide me enough money to make up the difference. See, I, I felt that I was being forced into that little pigeonhole where employers, once they realize that no longer on active duty, they believe that all they have to do is make up the difference in what I used to make. Yeah, and that that thinking is out there. So also at this time period, I was staring out at my driveway and realized I had four vehicles that I had paid off, completely paid off. I owned them free and clear. So what did I do next? Well, I had to stop the bleeding in my household. So I went to the first vehicle and I took out a loan. I got a great interest rate on it. But now I've got a loan payment and a debt that I didn't have. And I'm using this to hedge my bets to try and get me to a job, which to be honest with you, I don't have one right now. Okay. So more time goes by. We burn through that money. I still don't have a job. Okay. Vehicle number two, we're going to do the same thing. And as that money depleted out, there was still no job. Okay, the same thing happened for vehicle three and vehicle four. And when I ran out of that money, I didn't know what to do next. But you know what I had in my wallet? These little plastic things. They're called credit cards. You've probably heard of them. And some of them had cash advances available to me. I could I could literally write myself a check and for an advance fee of like 3% of prepaid interest, I could get access to all of that money 
and they would wait a whole year for me to pay them back. And I started down that road. And then around the 10-month mark, I finally landed a job. I finally got that first interview that would allow me to sit down in front of somebody else and explain to them why I'm a great fit for their team. But here's the problem. The job I had to take was definitely multiple levels below my skill set. But I had to put my pride in my back pocket. I really did because I was in a world of hurt. 27 years serving my country in the army, doing okay financially, was completely wiped out. You heard me correctly, completely wiped out in 10 months because of a loss of job. Yeah, I had a loss of job called retirement. And here's that that lie that I think that you're believing right now is that you might be doing the exact same thing. You might actually be in the army doing the exact same thing that I did. Or you might be in corporate America stuffing money into that 401k. And here's the problem. What happens to you when the job market becomes volatile? Have you, have you ever lost a job along the way? Have you ever been called into your boss's office and you know he tells you all these great things about you? And in the last sentence is, but we got to let you go. Go pack up your stuff. These two goons will escort you to the front door. It happens. So we come back from the break. There is a shining light, and I will share it with you when we come back. And it's not an oncoming train, I, I swear. Welcome back to the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show. It's time to turn up the volume and fine-tune your passive income plan so you can create the lifestyle you've always wanted. Welcome back to the show. All right. So it's, it's like two and a half years into me working this job, and I was thankful to get the job. I really was. And and the person that I worked for, she was actually pretty great to work for. It was just all those other above her doing dumb things, even though you had smart people telling you, don't do those things. So there, I told you. All right. So let's get back to you though. So I, I get to this point in my life where I've stopped the hemorrhaging. Yeah, I've I've stopped the bleeding. I've I've got a job going on. I'm, I'm making okay money. I'm not making great money, but I'm trading time for money. And over the course of this job, what I'm finding is that the, the normal 40-hour work week is starting to expand into more of a 50-hour work week. And then it's getting closer to a 60-hour work week. And here's the thing. There's no rhyme or reason to it. It was, it was stupid decisions that people made that caused the additional hours of work. Oh, and by the way, there's no overtime paid for that. Yeah, the way they work it is is when you get to a certain price point as far as salary, you're you're considered a salaried employee or management. I don't know, however they do that. So in other words, they they've got some little loophole in there that says if you don't make this amount of money, then you're eligible for overtime. But if you do make this amount of money, you don't get overtime. And I will tell you, the idiots that were in charge of that organization abuse that. They abused it, and they abused me in the process. And I got tired of it. I got very tired of it. So tired of it that in my mind, I started to realize that what I had been doing my entire life was failing me because I was, I was back in line with that original game plan. Now I'm working for another organization. It's a municipal government, by the way. And what do they offer? something called a pension. Oh, so I'll just do 20 years with this organization. I'll get another pension. I'll be 70 years of age. I'll max out my social security. Life will be good for me. And at the age of 70, I can get on with my life. It was a terrible trade-off. It was a terrible trade-off. So 
I bebop into church one day with my son in the car. We flip on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate radio show. The show you're listening to. Different guy, obviously. And, and he's talking about some things in the real estate market. And my son had told me that he had an interest in you know investing in real estate. And I had invested in real estate. I hadn't done excellent things with real estate, but you know, I hadn't walked away from real estate. And we heard this radio show. They were making points that were relevant, kind of like the points I'm making to you right now. And I went with my son to a free workshop. Yes, we went to a free workshop provided by Lifestyles Unlimited. And this is back in 2017. Now, of course, I had my guard up. Yeah, because my BS detector is always on high alert. Always. And trust me, walking into this meeting, it was definitely on high alert. And part of the reason for it was I'd actually gone to a couple of other organizations that really just used a bunch of high-pressure sales techniques. And, and it was really all about join, 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 join without me even understanding what is it I'm joining? What is it you guys do? And that's what's so different about what we do at Lifestyles Unlimited. We make no bones about what we do. As a matter of fact, our free workshop is really the first hour and a half of the whole financial freedom seminar. Yeah, you heard me correctly. When you become a member of Lifestyles Unlimited, the first thing that you do is you get scheduled for our 16-hour financial freedom seminar. That's where the rubber meets the road. But we, we don't wait for you to join to start telling you information that you can actually put into practice today. No, we actually start during the free workshop. We want you to have this information up front. Because to be honest with you, with that information, if, if you know how to do it correctly, you'll be successful. Yeah, we make no bones about it. Now, you really need the additional 16 hours because there's a whole lot more to it than that first hour and a half. But I will tell you this, your time will not be wasted in that hour and a half. As a matter of fact, we also do something called case study. Now, case study, is, it's, it's a members-only event, but it's the only members-only event that we do at Lifestyles Unlimited that allows me as a member to invite anybody that I want. You heard me correctly. Anybody that I want, I can invite to case study. So check this out. Let me, let me give you a couple options. I'm, I'm serious because these are things I think you need to do before the end of the year. Yeah, we've got, we got a whole nother week that's going to go on after Christmas. Yeah, you know that week is there and, and maybe you got time off from work. Maybe you're going to wind down a little bit. Maybe you're just going to like binge football. And trust me, I get that. I like football a lot. I really enjoy watching football. But what I enjoy more is changing my life with the real estate that I own based on what I was taught by Lifestyles Unlimited. So let's do this. There's, there's two ways I can introduce you to Lifestyles Unlimited. The first way is just to say, hey, man, go to a free workshop. And if, if you just want to do that, I, I'm totally fine with that. You go to lifestylesunlimitedworkshops.com. Yeah, lifestylesunlimitedworkshops.com. If, if you can't even get all that down, just, just remember Lifestyles Unlimited. You, you can get to a workshop if you just get to our website. Now, I'm totally serious about that. The second way I can introduce you to Lifestyles Unlimited is I can introduce you to something called a case study. Now, case study is that event where we have our members talk about deals that they've recently done, and we kind of switch up case studies. So the, the normal mo modality is that we'll have two investors that are investing in single-family properties, and then we'll have one investor that's investing in multifamily properties. Sometimes we switch it up. We'll trade out maybe a single-family investor for somebody who passively invests into multifamily real estate. That's, that's how I do the majority of my investing. I invest with other Lifestyles Unlimited members that do all the heavy lifting. I'm not interested in doing all that heavy lifting. I'm interested in them doing it and giving me the results I'm looking for. And because I know they're able to do that, I got no problem putting my money with them. So 
case study is really cool because you actually get to see people that are doing the tactical work, that are in the trenches, that are coming back and reporting to us how things went. And I'll tell you, it's an eye-opener, especially for new members. Because when you have somebody that's walking you through a deal, and maybe it's a deal you identified that maybe you thought about taking down, but for whatever reason, you stepped away, and, and this person took over the deal, and by doing the deal, they got all these great returns. And then you get an opportunity to sit back and go, well, that could have been me. That could have been me. So what do you do? Well, what you do is you just get the next deal because the deal of a lifetime comes around literally once a week. And, and trust me, with, with all the deal flow that I've been seeing in my inbox just this month alone, there's way more investment opportunities for me at Lifestyles Unlimited with my fellow members or just, or just buying the real estate opportunities that come out on the single family space and the multifamily space, then I have enough money to invest in. It's a great problem. And, oh, here's the beautiful thing. I spent, what, like 30 years chasing a job, chase, chasing a pension, right? You remember all that from the earlier part of the show, right? So check this out. After becoming a member and by doing everything that I had been taught to do, in two years, I got to the point where everything was good for me. Yeah, everything was good. As a matter of fact, Tina and I were going over the spreadsheet and she had the epiphany. She's like, I don't know if you noticed this, but I think we're retired now. And I'm like, what are you talking about? She's like, right there, look at the bottom line. And sure enough, based on the analysis that we did, we had achieved retirement. In other words, we had enough income coming into our household from passive sources that I didn't need to work anymore. And you know what I had already done? Well, to be honest with you, I had already left that job six months after becoming a member of Lifestyles Unlimited because I didn't have to wait the entire two years for my life to change. No, I was able to start making immediate changes in my financial situation. Now, it took me two years to get to that point of retirement, but I didn't have to wait two years for everything to kick in. Does that make sense? So what I was able to do was leave that job that I was hating so much, take another job, which didn't pay nearly as much, but I didn't care. I didn't need that much money. As a matter of fact, the new job gave me an opportunity to just do some wonderful things, to help a lot of other people. And I will tell you this, we can do this for you too, but you've got to get your head in the game. So here's your opportunity. If you want to attend one of our case studies, send me an email at askal at luinc.com. You heard me correctly, askal at luinc.com, and I will get you connected. The Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Lifestyles Unlimited Real Estate Investor Radio Show constitutes an endorsement recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.